Welcome back to another wild ride at Karen Go Burr. Today we're diving into a bizarre mix of drama, from a Karen knocks on her neighbor's door, teetering between creepy love declaration and full-on harassment, to a furious Karen chucking her drink at a Brazilian officer, instantly flipping a switch that sends everyone into a frenzy. A co-parenting nightmare no child should have to witness, it's a full-on emotional war zone. A woman ignites chaos at a closed restaurant darting into the bathroom to hide when police show up. Buckle up, this compilation is a roller coaster of madness. Retail Rage Unleashed! A simple dispute between a man and a woman quickly spiral into a chaotic showdown, with insults flying faster than shoppers on Black Friday. From words to fists in a flash, things turn physical and store baskets become makeshift weapons as the tension escalates to a full-blown brawl. Get out. 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 You, this is so dead. She's literally, oh, she's literally just hitting the window. She's spitting. Get out. No, no, she just hitting the window. Get out. Please, get out. Yeah. Get out. Get out. The plot thickens. A fearless bystander jumps in. But is he the peacemaker or just adding fuel to the fire? Brace yourselves for the strangest neighborhood visit ever. Karen knocks on her neighbor's door, teetering between creepy love declaration and full-on harassment. Oh, what are you like, doing? I'm in love with you. I'm sorry. I'm in love with you. What the f You didn't tell your girlfriend we're having an affair. Oh my god. <laughs> we're having an affair. Kim. My dog wants to say hi. Do you have any... Uh, can we have a cocktail? What are you talking about, Kim? Are you... Oh, oh my god. Alright, well, I guess I'm gonna have to contact the landlord again. Yes. Yes. Do you know why? Because you're, uh, you're like, harassing me. Yes, because you f*** with me and... I asked dogs, you nicely and to... you're the only one complaining. I asked you and nicely... Found... A simple noise complaint about her dog triggers an outrage that no one saw coming, and she's ready to go nuclear. Now, Hi, your from dog... all the other... Mm, Okay. That it's you guys causing all these problems. Well, that's fine, but now you f with me, okay? Kim, I asked you nicely to quiet your dog down while you're in a common area. Yeah, I'm and then you and, and then you cuss and you're then you cussed me. Shut your window. Wow, our windows are actually shut today, and we also recorded hearing the dog through our windows. So. Oh my God, so good. So yeah, we're sending this to the landlord. Okay, have a great day. This is theft, actually. Theft! Oh my god! Can I touch it with it? Oh, Kim. You're almost telling on people. Oh, we're gonna call the police oh. now, Kim. We're gonna call the police now. Armed with a chain and a bad attitude, Karen escalates the showdown, taunting her neighbor like it's a medieval duel. Karen's summer meltdown kicks into high gear as she ambushes a poor cyclist just minding his own business. Drama incoming. With no facts to back her up, Karen declares the bike trail forbidden, turning a peaceful ride into an absurd showdown. Is that okay, a full bike? Yeah. You know they're not allowed on the bike trails on full motorized vehicles. These can't be on the bike paths. Uh -huh. Yeah, you have to bike on the street because they go like 35 miles an hour. This thing goes 25 miles an Yeah, you're not allowed on the bike trails on a full electric bike. There's signs all over. And you people piss me off because the guy came up this far from me and almost took me off. I would either been in the hospital or dead. Oh, I'm sorry. I was trying to tell you I was behind you. Yeah, I, you I, need I, to I, stay I, on the streets because you're not allowed on the path. I'll put it on. I'll put it on too. I'm sorry. Sorry, I don't mean to. No, you know, 
And sensing the crazy about to hit full throttle, the cyclist opts for the ultimate escape, speeding off and leaving Karen to stew in her own rage. A fed up customer takes aim at an underperforming employee, but instead of fixing the issue, she doubles down with attitude. Who cares about being wrong when you're this stubborn? I should grab my food from the drive thru. Seriously? Are you. I'm not tripping. Why she looks so confused? Where did she go? I am not tripping. Hi, I'm sorry. What's, what was the issue? You think this is how you should handle your customers, your product? I'm sorry about that, ma'am. Can I get you anything else? And can you please not record me? Why would you hand me things like this? She had a glove. You think this is a normal way to handle customer stuff? Don't you dare give me that corporate tone. You are rude and disrespectful and this I'm is not okay. Take this back. Take this back and I want my money back. You can get out of my drive through There you go. I want my money back. <laughs> my drive through Tensions ignite as both sides exchange words. With tempers flaring, it's clear this employee won't be winning employee of the month anytime soon. Buckle up for this fiery showdown. Boss employee blowout. Things go nuclear when the boss drops the ultimate bombshell, withholding tips because business is slow. Cue the chaos. Money coming into the business, so we have to add the tips to it at the moment. But well, then my tips are I've earned. We can't give them to you. Yeah, but why aren't we when we've worked hard for them and they're giving to us, they're not I'm giving not to you? I'm not saying you don't work hard, you do work hard. But with the tips, it makes it better. Well, normally and that, that will be done, but under the circumstances at the moment, we just can't afford to do that. We can't give you the tips. I'm just sorry about that. Outrage ensues as the employee fights for their hard-earned pay, while the boss pulls out every excuse in the book to justify the theft. Tensions reach a boiling point. But they're not tipping you. I had a table of ten the other day. They're tipping someone who works for me. Yeah. They ask for my name. Hmm. They leave the money for me at the yeah, end. They don't leave it for you, Kafka. They don't I say, give this to Kafka, give this to the company. I understand what you're saying. But at the end of the day, that has to come back to us. I don't understand how the business is doing badly when every single day it's busy. I'm not so that doing badly. Surely there's other things that you can do to earn a bit more money than You've taking our tips. Because there's nothing else we can do. You come here working for us at a point where we need to have this money in and it's as simple as that. That's oh. how it's got to be. It's not fair though, is it? Well, and it's not fair. It's not fair. It's just how it is. Right. You've got to accept it simpler. A jaw-dropping display of greed. The boss chooses profits over people, showing zero empathy. Shout out to the employee for staying composed amidst the madness. Brace yourselves for an unforgettable meltdown. Karen in full rage mode launches a glass of drinks at a Brazilian officer, setting off a chain reaction of chaos that no one saw coming. Total pandemonium. Officers rush in as Karen fights off the cuffs like a wild animal, turning the bar into a scene straight out of a disaster movie. Entitled Karen Alert. This customer strolls in thinking they can bypass everyone with appointments, demanding immediate attention and confronting an employee who tries to reason with them. You guys came in as a walk-in. I understand that. I should not take almost nine hours. Sir, you're a walk-in. I have appointments. I have appointments until one o'clock. I can't just stop the dogs that I'm doing because of a walk-in. I already squeezed, I didn't take my breaks. I didn't sit down until four o'clock today to put her in between my appointments, giving up my break. Give it up. Why don't you make an, why don't you make an appointment? How's that my problem? There wasn't, and we still graciously took her in as a walk-in. Sir, I have other dogs. Karen's logic unravels as she is reminded of the fully booked schedule, but even special accommodations can't satisfy her inflated sense of priority. We had, 
almost 22 dogs today, but we still took her in for you to come in, be rude to me, and then swing my door open. No, ma'am, she's not. She'll be, and I will call you 20 minutes before she's ready. I told you the same thing over the phone. And I let you know when you dropped her off that there was not going to be a time. And I believe you're exact. Why you would expect the time, sir, I don't understand if I told you that there wasn't one. I'm not complaining about my job. I'm complaining about I'm complaining about the fact that you feel entitled. The employee hitting her limit shuts down Karen's tantrum with a firm response, and her boss steps in to back her up. Proof that common sense wins the day. Co-parenting chaos erupts in front of their kids, turning into an emotional battleground no child should witness. Tempers flares, the situation spirals out of control. I'm Do trying you to understand I'm, me. I'm trying to get her four year old daughter. Ed does not give you permission to enter my home without my permission. Really? Don't you really? dare really? in my house ever again without permission. Do you understand? Did you leave our kids home alone? They are not in danger. Did you leave our kids you home do alone? Not Did you leave our kids home alone? Shut your mouth, man. You leave us home. You leave us home. You leave us home to go You leave them home. Don't talk to me about that. Come out, lock the door, we're out. Don't you dare enter my home ever again. They, they go, they, they, you are crossing they, a line. Crossing a line, you what are you talking about? about? He defends barging into her home, claiming the kids were abandoned. But instead of cooling off, the argument reaches a fever pitch, with the woman channeling some serious Karen energy. I went to get our four-year-old daughter. You what are you talking about? What are you talking about? I went to get our four-year-old daughter. Hear me. Listen, the girls Don't get in the they get in the car or go to the police me. station. Go. I'm serious. Go now. Okay. Because I have you on video entering yeah. my home. Yeah. To get our kids. And I asked you repeatedly yeah. to, I get to get our kids. Of you to to get our kids. Out the door, lock it. To get our kids, Jen. To get our that kids. That doesn't give you the right. Just to because get our you kids? say it doesn't give to you the right. To get our four year old kids? It does not give you the right to get our four year old kids? Home. To get our it kids? It does not give you the right to enter my home. How am I supposed to get our kids then? How am I supposed to get our kids? You don't ever walk in my home. How am ever. I supposed to get our kids? You don't walk in my home. Where's our kids going? You don't like it? Go to the police and, okay. and I will show them the video. Okay. And I I'm going to the station right now. The standoff ends with threats of police involvement, leaving behind a toxic cloud as both parties vow to escalate things legally. Cringe-worthy encounter. A man's awkward attempt to flirt with a cart girl crashes and burns in spectacular fashion. His smooth lines, more of a train wreck. Thank you. I am, I am being dangerous. You do recognize that you are absolutely stunning, right? Thank you. Most men, I would imagine most men, especially of an older generation, they're not used to seeing such apparent beauty. No, when they see someone just as breathtaking as you, it is a wonderful thing to find someone attractive and then to have their attention for however fleeting it may be. And so for me as a man, he stumbles through a rambling confession, making less sense with each passing second, leaving everyone wondering how he thought this was a good idea. Someone as stunning as you, it is exhilarating. So imagine, being in your presence, being in your orbit, these older gentlemen who have never seen such beauty, I would imagine that they are just taken so aback that they become monkeys, like most men are. Pour into understanding why I feel what I feel. Are you doing card? Yes. Here, but I will tell you this, if I do see you again, which I hope I do, I I'm, think I'll be around. I'm gonna wanna you talk to time. you more. Having, I like being in your orbit. I Thank hope you. you are told on a daily basis that you are treasured much as I hate to say this, I am going to miss you. Just, I want to enjoy every moment, and I hate knowing that this moment is going to end. You have beautiful golfing in front of me, it's just, I have someone so beautiful in front of me right now too. Even as she retreats to her cart, clearly uncomfortable, he keeps up his misguided proclamations of love. Talk about not reading the room. Get ready for some juicy drama. A woman brazenly cuts the line at Six Flags and smugly rubs it in everyone's face. Big mistake. <laughs> Yes, you. Yes, you. <laughs> I don't know what you're saying. I love you. I love you. 
She gets the boot, security sends her packing to the back of the line, and the crowd laughing and cheering like it's the highlight of their day. Nothing unites strangers like a classic Karen showdown. Next, things heat up as two men clash over an idling car, a noisy engine, and a whole lot of perceived disrespect, sparking a tense showdown about noise pollution. There we go. We don't like this car on making noise. What the hell? Yeah. He's harassing the guy because he has his car on. It's a hot day, and tempers boil over fast. The argument escalates, with neither backing down as onlookers start to gather. Yeah, you can't tell me to in car. You can't tell me. I know. I'm staying out of it. Please, you. Yes, you can't. Karen Driver doubles down, cranking up the noise just to prove a point. Reason left the scene a long time ago. This dramatic finale unfolds as a woman ignites chaos at a closed restaurant, darting into the bathroom to hide when police show up. Did she go inside? Officers collect evidence from employees, uncovering a wild mix of threats, assault, and harassment all caught on video. This is going on the Troy website. They seem to be leaving. Okay. All right, well, I'm going to go make sure that they're all good with her, and uh, if we need anything else... Karen, now half-naked and hiding in the toilet, rants endlessly, claiming she has IBM. Compliance, not her strong suit. Even the store owners had enough. The same with you. If uh, we need anything, I might just give you a call, okay? All right. Well, I appreciate it, you guys. I have a government. I have a government. I have a government. Okay, that's not helping. Thank you. She came back twice and told her that they were closed and she drove off. Officers, unimpressed by her excuses, confirm her guilt as more evidence piles up. She came back on foot, so trespass probably too. All right, Lynn. Lynn. Good to hear enough. Go ahead and stand up for me, okay? Come on. Thank you, ma'am. Wash your hands real quick, Lynn. No. Yes. I've done nothing. Stop. You're being detained on the suspicion of trespass, assault, possible OVI. Now put your legs in the car. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Suspension on your license for a previous OVI refusal, and then you're getting charged with OVI refusal with prior conviction because you refused to take the testing. 
Any questions, concerns you have, all right? With her shady past exposed, Karen's cuffed for operating under the influence, trespassing, and more. Refusing the sobriety test is just a cherry on top of this chaotic saga. And that wraps up another wild ride, from a retail rage fest where a simple disagreement turns into a full-blown verbal brawl, to Karen's epic summer meltdown as she ambushes an unexpecting cyclist, and the customer showdown with an underperforming employee who just digs in deeper when faced with the truth. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more outrageous Karen encounters.